Hi hey everybody, I am Ryan Booth, head sock folder here at Abstra. Um, this is Jir Julian with Network to Code, and today we are going to be covering how Abstra can be used to streamline your day-to-day -day operations. So we've shown with Abstra how you can simplify, you can streamline your um, fabric management, your fabric deployment, how that simplifies your day-to-day. -day. It also frees up a lot of time within your operations, as you can tell. So Abstra understands this, and with that, we've always made our API a first-class citizen so that you can take these, this time, this um, system, and leverage it into your operations, into your deployment, better build it into the orchestration of your organization, not just how is networking being organized, but how do you build that into the orchestration that's <coughs> happening with your servers, with your apps, with the rest of your infrastructure. So, like I said, our API is a first-class citizen. We've always built everything around the API. So everything you've seen today, um, you've seen the demo from DJ, you've seen the CLI from Rags, it's all API-based. Any feature that you touch, anything that you look at within AOS, it is done by API. If it doesn't have an API, it does not exist. So with that power, it allows you to build on the simplicity we've given you, to streamline everything you have and build that out faster and smarter. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jir, who's gonna run through a quick demo how we're integrating um, the IBA stuff that Rags just talked about with Network to Code and how they can stitch stuff together to make this work. So I'll hand it over to Jir. Thanks, Ryan. For those that aren't familiar with Network to Code, we're a pioneer really in the, the network automation field, helping dozens of Fortune 500 companies along their automation journeys through training, enablement, and transformation services. And it's been a really exciting ride getting to look at all of the different pieces around network management, network configuration, all the automation that goes along with that, and, it, and realizing that it's more than just the, the, the core semantics of configuration management. There's so much more to it. Network engineers these days are really focused on of course, their core job, which is managing a network, but what do they do beyond that? There's so much more. There's, there's configuring the devices, but there's all the communications you have to have between your different stakeholders, your internal teams. There's all the documentation that we have to provide. There's, there's all the analytics, the alerting, the monitoring systems. There's so much more than, than just managing the network devices themselves. So how do you keep track of all of that? The more, the more of these things that you're having to interact with every day, you're, you're introducing opportunities for, for, for simple mistakes. You know, when one of my, my core things that, that drives me crazy is when you have to copy and paste the same information into five different places just to, to get your job done every day. Um, that doesn't really add value to you as a network person. What adds value is getting the network thing done and the whole purpose behind that is there's a business reason that that needs to be done. Somebody has an idea that needs to get out to customers, and this is just one segment of that. So how do we accelerate that? How do we really focus on, on the overall business value? So in this demonstration, we've stitched together a number of tools, and those include uh, ServiceNow, the um, Slack, AOS for both their the intent-based analytics, as well as the configuration and the um, the the monitoring of the devices, the the you know ensuring that that the configurations are applied correctly across the board, and we want to we want to show how we can turn this whole workflow into something that's that's a lot easier to uh, to manage day to day, and and how we can really complement that, that configuration management and the analytics with that broader approach to pulling things together. So in this scenario, we've got a, a customer that's doing a phased deployment of a new data center. And we've only got two spines in place right now. We start, uh, we'll start bringing some traffic over into that data center. Things are, are gonna get 
uh, a little out of balance. And based on the analytics um, from, from AOS, we're going to detect a, a scenario that, that tells us we need to accelerate the deployment of more spine capacity in there. So grow out that fabric a little bit faster than we had planned. And all this comes down to just giving a consolidated workflow and, and making things easier to use. So jumping right into it, this is our scenario. We have, as you can see, there's, there's two spines that are active in this fabric. And we have another that we're planning to deploy in you know, another week or so. But what will happen uh, through this, we'll, we'll start driving some traffic across this. The analytics are going to fire. That's going to get picked up by our monitoring system. And, and then we'll be able to, to work through the resolution of that pretty quickly. So I'm going to start some traffic in the background here. And then we'll walk over here and, and take a look. These are, these are the intent-based analytics that, that we've been looking at um, in some of the previous sessions. Yeah, so while, <clears throat> while that traffic's taking its time to get through and get picked up on, what I'll explain here is the two probes. Um, one primarily, and then what we're looking at here. So we have two probes, <clears throat> IVA probes, excuse me. We have a hot cold interface counters probe. Basically what this is doing, and this is watching all of the links dynamically across the fabric, and it is letting you know, is there any deviation in traffic load? So does traffic all of a sudden spike way high on this link, or does it drop all of a sudden? And it's giving you that indicator that there's something different going on here than what we're expecting. The nice thing with that and with these probes is it goes more, goes further than just saying, hey, let us know when this threshold of, I don't know, eight gigs gets crossed. Or let me know when it goes below mm, a gig. Sure, that works for me. It's dynamic. Um, we're working off a deviation, so it works with the traffic pattern. It recognizes when that traffic pattern is broken, and it's going to turn around and alert on you. And it does right there. If we're lucky, we're also going to see the fabric ECMP imbalance get loaded, too. We pump traffic across one specific link of the fabric. Not all of them, just one. So it's going to let you know, hey, this link is getting hammered when the rest of the fabric is not. Why is that happening? What's going on there? You probably need to look at this. So right now with that alert right there, he'll pick up from here showing us how it's actually getting triggered and hitting the workflow. So over in Slack here, you can see that the network team just got a notification of the, uh, the analytics um, firing there. So from that, we can actually uh, go ahead and automatically open a ticket. This is something that our team has identified is a likely scenario for needing additional fabric capacity. So we've gone ahead and, and set that up. And as a matter of fact, we'll go right into service now. And we can take a look at this ticket. We can see there's extended fabric congestion. Here's some information about where that happened. And then we can come over. Well, first we'll go in and talk to our data center operations team. We'll make sure that, that this next spine that we have is ready to go, that it's racked, stacked, cabled. Um, and once they have that assigned in AOS, so we'll see that um, you know, if we were to look closely at this device here, now the, the serial number has been assigned. It's, it's attached. So we can go ahead and approve this workflow. Um, so we'll come in here and we'll hit approve. And if we go back into this ticket, we can actually watch what happens uh, in this process as well. One of the things that, that is pretty common is, you know, during the process of a change, you want to attach information about the status of what's going on to the ticket. And that's, you know, that's the whole process of I've got to go here, grab this, copy it over, paste it into the ticket. All that can be handled automatically by the system. So you don't, have, you don't worry about forgetting a step. You don't worry about missing something, pasting it in the wrong place. It's all right there as part of our workflow. And our entire network team is being updated in Slack as well. So everyone's aware of what's going on. 
So you can see we've activated this new blueprint. This device is deployed. We can go back over here to our dashboard. And meanwhile, now that this has been deployed, now that AOS has validated that this was deployed successfully and correctly, we can go ahead and mark this ticket and service now that it's ready for review. And for the sake of demo purposes, we, uh, we just have a, a timer on there, and we're going to go ahead and close that ticket out as well. But what we really wanted to demonstrate here is that you can still have appropriate manual intervention steps where they make sense. It doesn't have to be a system that's fully automated. A lot of people aren't quite ready for automation to, to, to look at a, a, an alert and automatically follow through with the solution. But you can mix those, and you can, you can basically eliminate those mundane parts of the job and, and focus on what, where you can really add value. Yes. <coughs> this is the part of the entire self-operating network as far as the AOS side. So you're gonna, we're going to create the ticket. AOS is going to hopefully resolve it, right? And then update the ticket and close it, and that's all happening behind the scenes, alerting whoever it needs to alert. Right. It's pretty cool. That's pretty so, cool. Some of the magic there that, for me as a um, seasoned network engineer, that I, I really love about this is when you try to do this stuff manually or you're trying to build out this workflow yourself, when you talk about deploying stuff with configuration and then validating it, you have to build out your workflows, you have to build out your modules, your programs, um, your scripting, your intelligence that will actually gather this information, that will reach out and say, hey, what are my BGP peers doing? How is LLDP? Do those neighbors look good? That gets very complex very quickly. And the nice thing is, is we're handling all of that. So if you watched as this thing was clearing out, you saw that there were anomalies still for BGP peers. Well, that's because your peers take a little bit to come up. It happens. You know, we're not doing anything different or special to make that happen any differently. So it lets you know, hey, your intent of what you want this network to be right now is different. And then you saw as they cleared out as your peers came up. The nice thing is to clear that out and close the ticket it is now just a simple API call. Reach out to AOS. Do you have any anomalies on your network? If you re return a blank um, structure, you're good. Close it out. You rely on us to validate all that data for you, and that frees up all that time for everything else. So you mentioned with the probes that you don't establish sort of what is normal, for example, that port traffic probe that you had there, that it establishes its own baseline. Um, how long, do, how much data or how long does it take to sort of establish what's normal for, for that based on your intent? Sure, sure. Um, that's dependable. With this one right here, we kicked those timers really low. So we want it to be sensitive and ha happen fast. So we all weren't staring at it for 30 minutes. Right. But all of those are um, tunable. Okay. So you can, you can adjust your um, sample window. You can adjust your time period to keep your data. Um, you can adjust the standard deviation values, things like that. And all different probes have different values that you can tweak and work with to get the sample you want and get the outcome you want. And if you've got something that you know, like a host in particular, that you know is occasionally bursty, for example, is there a way to sort of remove those from that interface or that host and say, look, we know that every couple of days this thing's going to explode and that's normal and, and we don't need tickets generated for it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, Rags was running through it with the queries and with everything that you're handling there intelligent-wise. You can tweak and work with that stuff. Um, it's, the nice thing with that, too, is, is once you get deeper into that workflow, um, like you mentioned, any of those stages, any of those outcomes we get from all of those processes can be streamed off. If you don't want to stream it off somewhere, query it via API. Every single one of those elements is queryable as well. So you can kick those off and handle that intelligence else, elsewhere as well. So completely flexible with how you want to handle that. Awesome. I mean, ultimately, you don't want a network that's so chatty. I mean, that means it's lots of things are broken, right? right? So ultimately, that's very, very important that it's tunable. You can adjust uh, what you're monitoring, how, how, how you're monitoring things. Absolutely. And that's, that's totally to Rags' point earlier. Yeah. You either see absolutely all the alerts of everything at all at once, or you see nothing, and everything's great. Right. And we help solve that. <laughs>